But you, you mentioned um, some of these, what I think people would refer to like maladaptive um, sort of conditions. You mentioned um, autism and you mentioned ADHD and you think like evolutionarily, oh, how could that be valuable? Right. Um, I think like th there might be that stigma that that exists. Um, and it is I, from from your last book, I sort of gathered that there's no there's no true idea of like a biological normal. Um, the, uh, we, we exist sort of as a group and like we all have different things to offer. And so you, you mentioned you, you mentioned autism and, and ADHD and g given the, the right context, you can extract a lot, a lot of value and um from these modalities of thinking, if you will, um, mm -hmm. because they're sort of different than maybe um, w the way that people perceptualize the world on average. Um, what about behaviors that um, are sort of, it's, it's less obvious to see the advantage of them? Um, let's say something like, like schizophrenia. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so, you know, um, it's thought that it's something in the region of, so schizophrenia is diagnosed in around 1% of the population. So mm -hmm. one in 100 people have got schizophrenia. And that's across the world and across many, many different decades as well. So historically, schizophrenia seems to have persisted across the human population. Um, now, what people might not be aware of, and I was quite surprised when I found out, is that 17% of the population, the human population, admit to having experienced some kind of hallucination. So hearing or seeing things that aren't there. So that's a perceptual issue that's also seen in schizophrenia. Right. right? So it's actually very common. And that's without, you know, drugs or alcohol being involved. Mm -hmm. So that's just the general population experiencing these types of hallucinations that people with schizophrenia might also experience. Um when we look at the genes involved, the genetic changes involved in schizophrenia, again, it's got high heritability of around, it's, you know, estimated to be around 80%, 90%, slightly lower than 90%, so slightly less um, than autism. And it's, again, genes that are involved in laying down the wiring of the neural circuit of the baby in the womb, and are also involved in how that neural circuit is going to function and operate throughout life. Um... When we also look at the genes that are involved, quite a lot of those genes have also been implicated in, um, well, quite a lot of people with schizophrenia, their relatives have a high creativity and a high innovation kind of um, behavioral characteristic. So there's some ideas that this condition, which is quite stable throughout our population, and has a high heritability, the genetic changes that are associated with it confer an advantage up to a threshold, up to a point. And that advantage is creativity and innovation. But once those genes converge, and it's thousand, like over 100 genes have been involved um, that we've identified so far. Mm -hmm. But once those genes converge, it can reach a threshold, which can then, instead of conferring an advantage, actually confer a disadvantage to individuals. But possibly, as we find out more and more about schizophrenia, possibly in the future, we might start to see that there's like recruitment strategies uh, where we're actually tr actively trying to attract individuals that have a diagnosis because they think in a particular way as a result of the genes that they've been given. So the, there, is, there is an advantage um, to, to that perceptual... Um, modality up to, up to a limit, that being creativity? Um, I mean, yeah, it's, with schizophrenia, it's slightly less clear. That, like, the data isn't completely there yet. So there's, yeah, so yes, Fair. there's no, there's no, <laughs> so there's no general scientific consensus that says that people with schizophrenia in itself, people that have been diagnosed with schizophrenia are more creative and innovative, mm -hmm. but you can see consistently that relatives are. So there seems to be some kind of genetic uh, reason behind it that's conferring some advantage, but it reaches a threshold. But perhaps there are some advantages to schizophrenia as well that we, you know, the, the, the data isn't there yet, but per right. perhaps in the future, we might similarly view these very complex conditions in the similar way to how we now currently view autism or ADHD.